cool. Hey guys, Devin here with Make Anything, and in case that excellent intro didn't give it away, we're doing another episode of Vase Exploration today. That's right, it's another video where I use vases as a means of experimenting with 3D printing and trying to push the limits of what can be done. Today we're doing some things that have been done by other people in the past, but I'm gonna see if I can just push it a little bit further, do things a little bit differently. We're gonna dye some prints, and we're also gonna try using some really big nozzles on the printers. Angus from Maker's Muse recently did a video using a one millimeter nozzle on his printer to make some really cool stuff. And even longer ago, a young fellow named XYZ Aiden used a two millimeter nozzle with his three millimeter filament printer. But I was curious if you could use a 1.75 millimeter filament with that same two millimeter nozzle. Yeah, a nozzle larger than the filament diameter. It doesn't seem like it should work. It seems like a dumb idea. And that's why I wanna try it out. Experimenting is fun. Let's go ahead and do it. This is the filament I'm gonna be using for this experiment. It's Tallman 618 Nylon, which is a crazy strong filament Plus, nylon absorbs dye really well, so it should be perfect. This is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, standard on my MakerBot Replicator 2, but I'm gonna be swapping it out for this one millimeter nozzle for this experiment. So we're gonna switch that on there, and we're also gonna up the temperature since nylon has a really high melting point. So we're gonna bring this all the way up to 250 degrees Celsius, and we're also gonna slow down the entire print just because we're working with a really thick filament and nylon itself should print a little slower. So we're gonna feed that through and see how it comes out. There's some PETG purging and after it comes the nylon and you can see how it starts bubbling and spitting out steam and that's because nylon is an extremely hydrophilic material which literally means it loves water. So despite me having it sealed in a Ziploc bag with a bunch of desiccant, it still absorbs some moisture and that causes this behavior. That's one big reason I'm using this one millimeter nozzle. I feel like a larger nozzle will prevent the bubbles from causing clogs or messing up the extrusion as much as it would with the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle. As you can see, I'm going nice and slow and I'm also not using a cooling fan. So it needs to go slow to cool itself, especially considering how hot the filament is. Now I'll just let you listen to it for a while since I really enjoy the popping sound myself. Yeah, I don't know, I really enjoy watching nylon print. It's kind of like a little firework show. Anyways, the print completed and it looks pretty good. It's super flexible and robust and we're just gonna go straight ahead and start dyeing it. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this small pot with water and I'm gonna have the model in there just to make sure that the model doesn't displace enough water and make it all overflow. So we'll fill that up and then we're gonna add some RIT dye. I'm using this Aquamarine and this is a liquid version of the dye but we'll be using the powder as well. They seem pretty much interchangeable. I'll put some dye in there. Maybe a little more. Maybe a lot more. We want this to be a nice strong color. Next, we'll turn the stove on high and get this water boiling. In the meantime, I'll get this second pot going with some fuchsia. And as I mentioned, this is the powder. As you can see, it's pretty much the same deal. You might just have to stir it around a bit to really get it to dissolve in the water. Once the water is boiling, or at least close, we can put our model in there and start soaking it. Besides absorbing the dye really well, nylon is extremely heat resistant. That's why we had to heat it up so much to print with it, and that makes it perfect for this technique. As you can see, I'm kind of moving it around, and I'm making sure that it gets all of the model, but mostly the bottom, and I'm trying to create a nice gradient here. I'll just keep moving this around for a few minutes, there's no perfect amount of time that you need to keep it in there. It just depends how strong you want the color to look. So here you can see we've got this really nice fade from a very light blue to a deeper, darker blue. And I'll pour out that water that's soaked inside. And we'll set that aside for now because I also prepared some of these monochromatic vases that I also printed in vase mode 
using nylon. This one I won't move around as much, I'm just going to hold it in place so that we get less of a gradient and more of this two-section vase where it's just blue and white. I'll actually take the same vase and dip it in the fuchsia as well to get this interesting multicolored pattern. I've got two more of each vase, so we'll do a nice fuchsia gradient there in the back and then another kind of split up one here in the front. And it's nice to use a clothespin or some kind of clip to hold it in the water. The spoon helps too, just because obviously it's really hot. I soaked the other side of this one in the blue and had a little bit of overlap that creates this purple gradient in between. So now we have a nice multi-color print using only two colors of RIT dye. Here's the end result, and boy are those colors really stunningly brilliant. The fuchsia especially is really strong, so I have a feeling that those powder dyes are a bit stronger than the liquid red dye. Here's my other chromatic vase, and as you can see that combination of a horizontal and vertical split of colors creates a very interesting pattern. And you can see how even though I just held the vases in place, there's still a very soft transition between the colors. It all looks very nice. But I have to say, my favorites are these soft gradient bases. They're a lot more simple, but the soft transition between colors is just so elegant and beautiful and so unlike most 3D prints. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. Here's the fuchsia one as well. And just look at this surface finish, look at this gradient. It's really amazing, really mesmerizing. And because the nylon had that moisture in it and created those steam bubbles, it created this kind of interesting, soft looking texture all over the vase. I also wanted to see what would happen if we dyed the nylon first and then printed with it. So the process is basically the same, just in a different order. I unspooled a good amount of this nylon filament, clipped it together with a binder clip, and then I dyed it just like the vases, putting different sections in the different colors to get a nice transition between all these different colors. So with this one, I did a section of that aquamarine, another section of fuchsia, and then I also left some of it undyed so that we kind of have a three color filament here. To print with this, I'm gonna go ahead and open up one of these old spools that I have. Most spools are clipped or welded together, but this one actually just uses screws. So it's easy enough to open up and just slip my filament on top of there. It's still a pretty loose coil and it could end up tangled, so I'll have to keep an eye on it, but it's better than nothing. All right, I'm super excited to print with this filament and see what happens, but we're gonna get back to that a little later in the video. Just for fun, I wanted to see if I could dye a regular PLA print, and not too surprisingly, it melted super quickly. I used the back of this wooden utensil to kind of try to poke it back into place, but man, it really deflated. You might think this print is ruined, but I decided to give it one last ditch effort and blew into it from the top. And really surprisingly, it actually kind of reinflated into its old shape, more or less. The result kind of looks like a deflated balloon, but hey, that's kind of interesting. It's definitely a unique print. And you know, if you wanna come up with something more organic and kind of weird looking, this might take you somewhere. To experiment more with the one millimeter nozzle and maybe a two millimeter nozzle, I decided to create these bobble vases using this nice gentle shape. So I have this revolve shape and I created another revolve around it that's just an offset that's slightly wider. And then I cut this slotted shape out of the larger vase and merged the two together, which gave me this interesting design that has these ribs running all along the side of the vase. From there, I split the vase into all these horizontal sections, and then I took every other section and rotated it slightly. The result is this kind of checkerboard pattern, and if I zoom in, you can see that each of these cubes is kind of poking out of the vase unsupported, so when you print this out, it'll probably blob over, but considering how small they are, and considering I'm using a fat one millimeter nozzle, I thought it might work and it might create an interesting result. In case that failed, I created this second version that's a little simpler and these checkers are kind of overlapping so that they should connect to each other and be a little bit more supported. So let's start by trying this one. Here I am printing it out with that one millimeter nozzle again using vase mode in Simplify 3D, which means the whole print is a constant spiral from bottom to top. 
I printed this one in Matter Hacker's Translucent Red Pro PLA, and it comes out this beautiful ruby color. As you can see, that one millimeter nozzle did a really good job. There is a bit of drooping, but overall it's super clean. And check out what happens when I shine a light through this thing. It is just stunning. Here's that smaller checkerboard pattern printing out, this time using Melt Ink's Glow in the Dark Blue PLA. And this actually came out super nicely and super clean as well. Just as I hoped, each of those cubes turned into its own little blob, but it's super consistent, super clean, and I actually think this might be one of my favorite vases. It feels nice, it's super sturdy, it's just a really cool and unique vase. And as I mentioned, it is glow in the dark, so let's go ahead and charge this up. First of all, this one also looks really cool when it's lit from behind. I think a lot of these vases are definitely gonna end up as light fixtures, so we're gonna have to do that in another video. But take a look at how well this filament glows. Even in this daylight, you can still see it emanating light and it looks super cool. All right, so those vases were printed with this one millimeter nozzle. Now take a look at this two millimeter nozzle. That is one giant hole. And the question is, can you print with a two millimeter nozzle using a filament with a smaller diameter? Well, let's just go ahead and try it out. No harm in experimenting. Well, it's going pretty slow, but that looks like a rather good extrusion. I think we can print with this. So to try this out, I made myself another vase. I call this one the soft serve vase. And it's just created from these six profiles that are all blended together using the loft tool. So I made this one in SolidWorks, but you can also make it in Fusion 360. And basically loft just merges all these shapes together and blends them together in a smooth way. And there are some steep angles here near the middle, but hopefully it'll be gentle enough that we can print it out with this massive two millimeter nozzle. So here's that first layer going down with a two millimeter width and a one millimeter layer height. Of course, we're using vase mode again. And as you can see, we're going extremely slow here because, well, this is a huge nozzle. We've got to melt a lot of plastic and we got to make sure that the heat block can keep up with the temperature. Here it is about halfway done and it seems to be working out. As you can see during this more steep section, it is a little bit rough. There is some wobbliness, but when it came out to the more gentle slopes, the print is super clean. I mean, I really couldn't ask for much better than this. Here's the final piece looking absolutely stunning in Matter Hacker's Translucent Aqua Pro PLA. And look at how thick this is. Remember, this was printed in vase mode. That is a single wall thickness. It's just a very wide nozzle. And of course, once again, I'll shine a light through it just because it looks so cool. For my next two millimeter print, I decided to use this spliced filament which was made with the palette, which basically cuts up a bunch of different spools of filament into a single strand. And just look at how fast it's being pulled into this extruder. It's ridiculous the volume of plastic that is being melted and printed with. This is not sped up at all. This is real time and it's insane. Here's what the print looks like. I'm printing the version of that bobble vase where it just has the lines going along the side and man, it came out crazy. You can see it's moving the whole print bed and the filament is kind of just flopping over itself in a really messy but interesting way. This is a result that I definitely couldn't have predicted and yet the outcome is pretty darn awesome. So that's another case for taking risks and doing experiments even when you think it'll fail. Once again, here's another real-time look at how fast the filament is being pulled into the extruder here. I'm honestly surprised that my printer is able to do this, and it's pretty exciting. Here's the final print. I decided to stop the vase halfway through because I thought I made a nice looking bowl. This is definitely one of my more unique prints. It looks like yarn or something. It's crazy, and I love crazy, so I'm pretty happy with how it came out. All right, back to that filament that I had dyed earlier. I gave it a day to dry out, and here I am feeding it into my printer. I'm using the one millimeter nozzle here once again, 
and as you can see, it came out looking really nice. The only problem is, I basically had to assist it through the entire process because it kept clogging. So I was sitting there manually pushing it through as it was printing. I guess that shouldn't be a surprise considering it was literally soaked in water. And to deal with that, I've heard you can actually bake the nylon filament in the oven and get the moisture out that way, or you can use a food dehydrator, but I just couldn't be bothered. So instead, I decided to try it one more time using that two millimeter nozzle. I had to make another batch of this dyed filament since I'd used it all, and I went with the aquamarine again, but instead of that fuchsia, I used this deep purple color. I did run over the filament for a while using the heat gun to see if that could dry it out and get some moisture out, but honestly, I should have used the oven or a dehydrator. Still, thanks to that fat two millimeter nozzle, I was able to get the nylon to extrude without clogging this time. And you know what? This is all about experimenting, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lie and say that I totally meant for the nylon to be super moist to get this really crazy bubbly texture. I mean, just try to look at this macro shot and tell me it isn't awesome. Actually, looking this close up, it's pretty interesting to note how the dye reacts with the nylon. It's not really perfectly blended together. It's more like there's a strand of color suspended inside of this clear nylon, which was really surprising. Here's the print finishing up using some undyed nylon since I ran out of the one that I colored, and you can see how much cleaner that top section is, showing what a difference the moisture content makes in this filament. But here's the final result, and as messy as it is, it kind of looks freaking awesome. It almost looks like the lines of Jupiter, making it all too appropriate for this episode of Vase Exploration. Well, isn't this a lovely collection of vases we have right here? I mean, we got a lot of stuff pumped out from this experiment, and for the most part, I'm really happy with how it turned out. The fat nozzles worked really well, I really like how those came out as long as you're printing things that are reasonably simple, no crazy overhangs or anything, it could work. And if there are overhangs, you'll just get some cool blobs like I did with this bowl. Dyeing the nylon prints was super cool. You got some results that aren't really possible without dyeing it after the fact. And then we also did some dyeing beforehand and that came up with some cool results too. I mean, I sure wish I had a dehydrator to get all the moisture out of this filament it would have printed a lot easier, but hey, we still got results and it's still pretty awesome. I hope this was another fun episode for you. I sure had fun. And as always, all these files will be up on my mini factory for you to download for free so you can do some experimentation of your own. Maybe you guys can play around and come up with some things that I didn't think of. That'd be fun to see. All right, but until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.